Hello everyone, um, <laughs> this is Lau, and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I am going to do a recap of my San Francisco Pen Show, um, and just talk about, you know, some points uh, that I can give to you if it, if you ever go on your uh, first ever pen show. Um, this was my very first pen show and I was super super happy about the outcome of it all. It was extremely busy, um, crowded, and also just very, um, you know, overwhelming of course. I think a lot of people that were there um, felt that it was overwhelming too whether it was their first or uh, first time or you know or not. Um, but I had a blast because I was there with um, I, I did go there to meet some of my friends. I have some friends in um, the in the in California and um, a few of them drove up uh, some of them also flew down, and so we all had a wonderful time in San Francisco alongside the pen show. So uh, just kind of like a little recap of my trip. So I flew there on Friday and met up with my you know, with my partner. Um, his name is Brandon. Um, we got to the Westin Hotel in San Francisco, and. Um, I don't think we were able to check into the hotel just yet and then we were also waiting for another friend of ours and she uh, her name is uh, Tiffany and we were all um, going to go into the pen show together on Friday um, but we got there earlier and so we couldn't check in and we had to carry our luggage with us <laughs> and go into the San Francisco pen show lobby so um, it, it was I didn't buy the weekend pass you know, online. And so, um, because I was going to be there for three days, you know, the whole weekend, I decided, you know what, I'll just buy the weekend pass. <laughs> um, and the regular pass allows you, like the, the day pass is $25, right? And, and then you could only go from one to five, which is such a limited time. Um, but if you bought the weekend pass, you can go anytime from 9am to 5pm. So like when they do open. Um, and so I had to get the weekend pass in order to even look around at that time. So I bought the two weekend passes for both uh, Brandon and I. And um, then we started looking around in the, you know, the hallways, the lobby, uh, the huge ballroom. And uh, it was definitely, there wasn't a lot of people to begin with, but it was very overwhelming <laughs> just to see, like, uh, the vendors, you know, just talking about all the pens and then trying to um, get me to buy them. And then as I was talking with one of the vendors, um, I saw Craig walking up. <laughs> um, so if you haven't uh, already are following Craig Rocanova over on YouTube. He has a channel, definitely go check him out. Uh, I said hi to him because I just, you know, recently uh, read some of his posts on YouTube and, you know, a giveaway that he had recently. So I saw Craig and I said, hi, hi Craig. Um, and he said, oh my gosh, you're the first person to say hi to me. And I was looking around, there's not a lot of people yet, it's like 10 a.m. <laughs> so it makes sense if, if I was the first person but there were some people already anyways um and uh he said hey do you want a pen i'm giving i'm giving stuff out <laughs> and so i was like sure of course i would love a pen i would never turn down a pen um you know even if it's a mont blanc that i don't really care for but i will take one <laughs> just to experience that but then uh so craig was saying um yeah, he, he was giving pens away and then he showed me his, you know, stack of pens and there were lots of um, beautiful um, Pilot or Namiki Royales and Yukaris and obviously he wasn't going to give those away, right? And uh, I said, oh, are you giving these away? <laughs> obviously not. Uh, and then he, he pretty much just said, no, 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 I'm not giving those ones away. Uh, and then he, he showed me the uh, Monte Grappa pen. And it is this lovely beauty. And I'll show it closer. I don't, uh, I'm, I'm doing this video for the first time 
um, and it's not auto focusing. <laughs> so, but this is the pen that he gave me, and it's such a gorgeous Montegrappa. It is a fine nib that writes like a medium, and um, it's celluloid. So, <laughs> he just gave me the pen. It was so nice of him. And then after that, uh, we uh, went around the whole pen show area and just got to know all of the vendors a little bit more. And I took a little bit of video of um, this one very sweet guy. Um, his name is Jeremy and his um, co-founding partner, his name is also Jeremy. And so they both are, you know, took over that company recently. Let's see, what was it called? It was Flax Pen to Paper. And he was just so sweet, so nice, and just explained everything about his, how they obtained their store, the, um, the story behind, um, you know, how they developed that store. And so, um, you guys should definitely give them, uh, you know, check them out online. I will post all, everything that I know of every vendor that I, you know, have information about um, where they have an online shop that you can you guys can check out um, but yeah so Jeremy was just so nice um, and then I'll you know add a little clip here of me talking to him hey guys. hello what's you doing good how are you good is it okay if I take videos yeah okay. <laughs> take video share them tag it what like, are you guys with? Post. We're Flax Pen to Paper. Flax Pen to Paper. Yeah, we're in Westwood by UCLA. Okay. Uh, basically, it's just four of us that run the show. This is Ryan. I'm Jeremy. Uh -huh. The other Jeremy just spilled something. Thanks, Keith. <laughs> uh, so he ran off to get a, a paper towel. Okay. Um, but we took over just at the beginning of the pandemic. So you guys are pretty local. This is it. Uh, this is basically our story here. Just got featured in Pen World, um, so you can read all about us there. Okay. And you buy from us here, mm -hmm. and you know we would love to have your business. All right. Thank you. Um, and then after that, we went and checked in, and then we came back later with my friend Tiffany when she finally arrived so we were with her from like one to three at the pen show and we again we went around everything um and that was great um let's see that's i did buy my first pen there because she was only there for friday and i know that i bought a pen when she was there buying her own things i think she bought an ink from Bungu box and i also <laughs> <laughs> I saw the the um I saw the Sailor Pro Gear Sanctuary Blue, which is Bunga Box one of Bunga Box's uh special edition Sailor Pro Gears. And it used to be on eBay for like seven hundred to a thousand dollars. And the main reason I wanted it was because the nib is engraved differently and the finial had a cute little turtle that was, you know, made of rotten. And it was just that nice little touch that I just, and, and then I like the barrel too. Like it's, it's translucent blue and green. Um, you know, both my colors, <laughs> well, teal and turquoise, but blue and green, whatever. Um, it's, it's so nice. Um, and so I bought that and she bought the ink. Um, and then there were other pens that I, was eyeing and I told myself I'm gonna come back on Saturday and Sunday and if the pens are still there I will consider it um, and maybe the prices might go down but I can't hope for that too much um, so there were two Leonardo Memento Zero Grandes that I saw and they were unique and they are unique um, Clarissa from the Leonardo table told me that they are one of a kind so it's you know big deal and the both of the Leonardo Momentos Zero Grandes are $440 which is pretty average and pretty good for Momentos Zero Grande gold nibs um, the special edition gold nibs in the Grande size usually are about $500 or $600 um, and so $440 I was okay with that my mother pearl is $420 so I'm, I'm okay with that <laughs> um, and then the other pen I really wanted was the uh, Aurora, I think it's the Aurora Optima, no, but it's it's the Aurora 
Tropici, which is a very, very limited and expensive brand, uh, or model of the brand. And um, I think that retails for like 1500 at the most. Uh, and the guy at Drum Ghouls was selling it, and he told me it retails for 1100 I can give it to you for 900 <laughs> So that was a huge deterring factor. Um, but the main deterring factor was that the pen was too heavy. The grip is made of sterling silver, and the cap is also made of silver, and the body was made of resin. Um, so it was a very heavy, heavy pen. Um, Uncapped by itself, it's like 29 grams, which is a fairly good weight for me because that's about this, the weight of a Homo sapien Bronze Age. But it was very short. It's a very short pen. Um, and then I, I felt it felt more comfortable to post it. And so when I posted it, it was it became like 45 grams. It's super heavy. Um, so that's what made me decide I'm not going with that one. So. For those of you that thought one of the Leonardo's was the one I chose in my community post on YouTube, you are right. Um, I'll post a, a video here of the pen that I got for you guys. This is my new Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. Oh my god, the way it looks in the video. Oh, you got that gorgeous, like purple chatoyans and then lighter purple lavender or violet but it's it's a very blue purple pen gorgeous and then it's a medium but it's a very broad medium and I just grounded it to like a medium fine and I love it so yes, it is the purple Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. It's just so beautiful. I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. And it's it shines so beautifully in the light. It's the depth of the material in here. You need the light to really see everything. Without the light, it's it's just a nice plain purple with black and some hues of light lavender, but it's gorgeous in the sunlight. So I, I'll, I'll put a picture or put a video in there to show how beautiful the light reflects on it. <clears throat> and then, um, so that was Friday. And then Saturday, my friends and I, we all went to the San Francisco area and i wanted to see the golden gate bridge and so we made our way there but before we went there we had lunch at japantown and we just um perused around the whole area uh i've always wanted to go to japan and you know what the closest thing i can get to will be japantown um and so you know the the food there was great um and the little shops in there were you know just so nice um and I did get like this cute little tea tin uh, from one of the tea shops there in Japantown. So basically, you know, I just put tea in here to keep them nice and fresh and dry. And I have a whole tin of <laughs> um, just tea stuff. So this is going to be a great fun addition in there. And then after Japantown, we went to the Golden Gate Bridge. And wow, is it beautiful. It, it was like I was watching a movie at the, you know, the big screen. <laughs> it was just amazing. Um, and no pictures captured how gorgeous, you know, my own eyes saw it to be. And um, it's just gigantic. It was so huge. <laughs> I think it's even taller than the, the, um, the tallest right here in minnesota we have um, an amusement park called valley fair and the power tower is probably the tallest uh, it's about 270 feet tall i think the golden gate bridge is taller i'm gonna google that in a bit but it was huge it was so beautiful <laughs> um 
So I was just so happy that I was able to see the Golden Gate Bridge before I left, you know. Um, That's the one thing that I wanted to see about San Francisco. I am from Minnesota, so it was definitely a culture shock of seeing San Francisco. Um, now I know there's not much about the pen show now, but, you know, my experience in San Francisco, um, a lot of the buildings were, like, built wall to wall and that was very new to me um i thought that that was very interesting uh very different i would not be able to live there if you know my house was next to somebody like that you know i mean it's uh but they're houses uh, i understand if apartments are like apartments are like that and that's normal um but um just seeing that was quite different so san francisco we came back and then i went to the pen show again um, on Saturday and you know just walked around again <laughs> because I like to do that just to see if the, my pen is still there get to talk to the vendor some more and then um, then my friend Tiffany left um, sun, early Sunday morning and then Brandon and I we went into the pen show again Sunday morning and then uh, we went out for lunch at In-N-Out um, and uh, Hawaiian restaurant nearby. It was just like a short 10 minute uh, walk. So that was really nice. Um, and, uh, and we went back again for my appointment with Sai from Tokyo Station. And I brought five pens with me to get grounded. So, <laughs> um, as you can see, they're all kind of blue, turquoisey, and teal. And Kelly who is also a friend of Tiffany's, uh, my friend Tiffany. And Kelly was there at the table with Sai, so I think she works with him. And um, while he was working on other people's pens, she talked with me and she was like, what is this pen? And I said, it's the Unicorn Galaxy from Visconti. And she said, I've never heard of such a pen. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have, and it's gorgeous. It's beautiful, and, and she, you know, she said the same thing. She loved it, and um, and then I told her about my Grail pen, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age, and then she looked at my, she looked at my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande, the Copper Patina. Yeah, it's not focusing again, but um, this is a gorgeous pen, <laughs> and she was like. What is that pen? That is so beautiful. And, um, you know, so I told her and I, you know, I'm just pride in my beautiful, beautiful turquoise teal blue green pens. Um, but it's just, you know, happy that she also took some joy in looking at them as I do. So I have these five pens. I, I just wanted, um, Cy to, or CY to, um, tune my Sailor Nib because my this is my Spring Rain, my very first pen from the Sound of Rain series and it is also my favorite but I put Shimmer Ink in here because I watched a YouTuber um, you know showcase this pen and she put um, a Shimmer Ink in here that matches the pen perfectly but it did not go the same way with me <laughs> I think that the shimmer got stuck between the tines and it just would not come out. But Sai just said that the tines were a little too tight and um, so the ink flow was very, very dry, and which makes sense. This pen definitely was dry and if it was dry, even with the, my wet inks, then of course it's going to write a little more scratchier. So he just opened up the tines a little bit and he smoothed out the t the uh, tipping material and it writes beautifully again so i'm so happy so thank you sai um and then i had wanted to also grind down my broad visconti down to like a medium um, but i had decided against that because i think it's okay to have a broad and it i'm using a dry shimmer ink inside of my visconti 14 karat gold nib but i think it's just such a perfect fit with this pen that I'm keeping it inked up with that ink for a long time. So I kept the broad, it writes nicely. I grounded down the my Leonardo Moment Zero Grande to a to size um 
Naginata Togi Nib. And it is a lovely, lovely grind. I'll you know show a different camera angle of the pen in a little bit here. But uh, it, it's lovely. It's got nice feedback and it writes with lots of varying line variations. So I'm very happy with that. <laughs> And then my Visconti Homo Sapiens. Funny story. I, <laughs> this is the first one I had him grind. And I said cursive italic. And I forgot to say smooth. I am wanted a CSI, a cursive smooth italic. And I just said cursive italic. And so I came back because um, I went to go see the other um, uh, nib grinder, Gina. I wanted them to grind my newest sailor sanctuary blue into a journal nib so I went over there and then came back and Sai finished this and I checked it out and it wrote beautiful um like it had amazing line variation but as I was like doing diagonal cross um like strokes it was super super scratchy <laughs> so I was like this is not smooth is it? Um, of course it wasn't because I didn't tell him Curse of Smooth Italic. And um, so then I just told him, I am so sorry. I think I might have said Curse of Italic, but this is my Grail pen. Um, and I do want it uh, as a Curse of Smooth so I can write it every day and not have to worry about the angle that I'm writing it at. Um, and then th that all happened as... Um, I think my, so I met a new friend there. Um, her name is Adriana and she was sitting there with me and Brandon talking with all of them. And she was just like, he's got a YouTube channel, check him out. <laughs> I'm very bad at self-promoting myself. But um, so she was so wonderful and just told everybody there that I have a YouTube channel and then Kelly added me on YouTube channel and then, um, Another person was there. She looked at the videos and said, Ooh, Grail Pen. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Oh, you better not mess up his pen, Sai. <laughs> and, and then Sai said, I already messed it up. <laughs> and it's my fault because I told him the wrong thing. Um, so Sai was able to fix it. And it's, it's perfect now. It is a cursive smooth italic. Yeah, it is not. I, I'll show it in the other... Um, angle, camera angle, but it is a smooth cursive italic now, and it writes so amazingly. It's got some feedback to it. Before the medium palladium nib um, was buttery smooth, with a hair of feedback, but now it's a cursive smooth italic, so it does have a little bit more feedback. So, perfect daily writer. Very happy with it. And his specialty Naginata uh, grind is also very nice. And then the third pen that I had him grind is the newest, you know, my newest Leonardo Memento Zero that I just bought. And it was a medium nib, but it wrote really broadly. And I'm just like, I'm not going to write often with a very broad nib. The Visconti medium, I already knew I was not going to. So I had him grind it down to like a medium fine. It's more on the fine side, but it's perfect. So I'll show you guys again. Leonardo Memento Zero Medium Fine Yeah It's more towards the fine but it's um, it's really nice so um, I didn't change the inks out this was the ink that we used to test at his table So that was Sunday um, and also on Sunday, <laughs> um, uh, Adriana was with us too. It was so much fun hanging out with you, Adriana. So shout out to you. Um, I think before my nib grind appointment with Sai, we were walking around and Adriana was telling me about, um, a pen that she wanted, uh, the Pilot, um, Vanishing Point Stripes that beautiful metal one. So Crazy Allen had the stripes vanishing point that she wanted. Um, it was, he was selling for 300. I think the retail value for that is about 330 to 360. And online it was 275. 
<laughs> but online it didn't have um, you know the, the one she wanted. Alan was like, "Give me a deal, and I will match you." <laughs> and I just said two seventy five, and and then Alan took a moment. And he said two eighty five, and then um, you know Adriana took it, and I was just like, "We did it, teamwork." <laughs> um, like she showed interest in wanting it, she really wanted it, and then he uh, was willing to work with us, and I gave him a low number to work on. Um, because I know that when if if people are willing to like haggle together, that you got to start you got to start at a really good number, because they're gonna match and go up. So um, we got it for two eighty five, and I was really happy for her. So enough of the stories. I wanted to share with you guys um, some you know some th some pointers, whether it's your first time or not. Um, definitely try to have. A list of pens that you want to try out um, because that is your one and only time to try it out if you don't have a store nearby um, and so I tried out the Pelican M1000 that's the one that I really wanted to try out and it is beautiful it is perfect um, I will share like a comparison picture here um, but it the M1000 is definitely the size of a Grande Leonardo Momento Zero Grande. It is a little smaller. Um, and the M800 is about the size of a Leonardo Momento Zero. It's slightly bigger. So, um, for those of you who have Leonardo Momento Zeros and want to, to see Pelicans, that's roughly the, the size. And so, um, if you've watched my videos, you'll see um, how the Momento Zero and Grande compare with other pens. And so, that can be a comparison point if you want to look into Pelicans. Um, and then if you have time after checking out all the pens that you really want to test out, then check out some pens you don't really care about or don't know too much about. Uh, I, I, I think it just helps to confirm whether you want it or, or whether, uh, just to confirm that you actually don't really want it or don't care for it. So for me, like, I don't really care for the Mont Blanc pen, and I tried it out at Crazy Allen's, and I didn't really, you know, it wasn't, it didn't wow me. So, uh, and I couldn't try it at his table either, so like, that, you know, that's fine with me. Um, one pen that I did want to t try out, but it wasn't there that I could have found, or that I had seen, um, I didn't see any Kilk pen, pens over there I want to, try those out just to see how it feels in my hand and I know that it uses a Bach nib so it's um I don't think I actually have a pen that uses Bach nibs I'm gonna need to research all my pens and just make sure I don't have any more but I do know I have Schmidt nibs and Yovo nibs um and then um buy the weekend pass if you can buy it online and if it's cheaper um like it was sixty dollars for me at the table, but I think it might have been like 50 uh, if you bought it online. Um, if you're gonna stay at the pen show for the whole weekend, just buy the weekend pass. Uh, if you're just gonna be there one day, then yeah. <laughs> you can only buy that one one day pass, but the one day pass is just a four hour period, which I think is more than enough um, to get at least half of what you want. <laughs> um, and then, Third, have a budget. Um, I had a budget of like $2,500 and I did save at least that much, but then life happened and then my budget went down. <laughs> so I then restricted my budget to $1,300 and I did take out cash, um, but about most of the vendors there do take card. So you don't have to worry about taking out cash, but having cash is really helpful for more of the vintage pens or you know some tables will take cash um and it's better and some some tables will uh they might not charge you tax or other fees uh if you pay uh in cash so um the only let's see i so i did pay in cash the only pen i didn't pay in cash i paid in card was my sailor pro gear but then i had cash for the rest of my stuff um so yeah, definitely have a budget because all the pens there are going to be very expensive. 
um, if you have expensive tastes like me. <laughs> um, and if you don't have expensive tastes and you're just there for, um, you know, like perusing all the pens you can get and you can get really nice deals on um, all kinds of pens. And there are definitely the, um, the more inexpensive pens there as well. Um, like lots of Twisbees, I saw some Lamy special editions, so those are probably going to be a little expensive, maybe like 60 bucks. Um, and then, yeah, so having that budget, it was really helpful for me to like decide not to go for the Aurora because it's 900 and that's going to go well above my budget. Um, and also like I didn't just buy a pen the moment I saw it that I really liked because I went back to my mind saying this is your budget can you afford this pen and then another pen <laughs> so it, it was a lot of like just reminders that uh, if I didn't have a budget I probably would have just bought whatever I felt like I wanted so um let's see and then I guess another tip is to go early in the morning or late in the afternoon so a lot of things do happen between 2 and 5 p.m. like 2 and 4 p.m. the the raffles happened at the pilot table I think on Friday at 3 p.m. I was so close Brandon my partner he had he was one number off <laughs> he could have gotten the beautiful Namiki Makie Urushi pen and oh I would have been so happy if he gave that to me for my birthday if he had won but you know he didn't win <laughs> we were so close but the next person won and you know congratulations to them um okay so yeah that uh and then other tables that I saw uh that I went to were the Tapali table the sailor Nighter, um, and then I also saw David Oscarson's table. That table was oh my gosh, all the pens in there were just a literal masterpieces to be put on a glass pedestal, not to be used. And I said in one of my my eight pen questions that I really wanted to try out the David Oscarson pen. It wasn't the green turtle pen or the white turtle pen that I wanted. It was the green version which is fine, but I held it in my hand for the first time. It, it was so heavy. It's such a heavy pen. It is made of glass. So I'll insert a clip here. Coral for the sea turtle. Yeah. Oh wow, it's very heavy. It's heavy, and the reason is yeah. if we use a thinner gauge of silver, mm -hmm. when we melt kiln fire the glass on, mm -hmm. the silver will actually collapse and melt. Right, yeah. So this is glass? That is all glass. There's an enamel. Right, and that's It's not just hard. a fading of one color. It's very tricky to blend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I know. I don't need that pen. <laughs> I absolutely don't need it to begin with since it's $6,400. $6, and then it's a heavy pen. And it is also like, I don't even see myself writing with it. <laughs> it's just not practical. Um, it's such a heavy pen. But it's beautiful to look at. So if you are a millionaire, that's probably nothing to you. Um, but so... I do want more practical, beautiful looking pens. <laughs> and then I also did meet up with, um, well, not, I didn't meet up, but like Pam, one of my viewers, um, bless your soul, you're so lovely. Um, so Pam, she found me on the third day, I think it was the third day, yeah, the third morning that I went to the pen show and she was carrying with her like, you know, a bag full of, uh, 
ink samples and she was like I really love watching your videos and I have some ink samples for you and I was just you know it was just so such a beautiful gesture by her and I'll be swatching your ink samples one of these videos coming up soon so again thank you so much and um, yeah so I think that wraps up my San Francisco pen trip uh, pen show trip and I am hoping to go to the Chicago pen show next May, May 2024. And then I also want to look at going to Tokyo, Japan for a pen show. So that's going to be, that's going to require tons and tons of money savings. So um, I really have to be good on my no buy. <laughs> I am going to be uh, doing a no buy after an Aurora pen that I am looking at. Um, and after that, I'm not going to buy any more in September after the Aurora pen. October, November, and then I'm... I may or may not splurge during the Black Friday sale and maybe the Christmas sale. But outside of those two, no buys. And I need to stick to that uh, so that I can save up for the new pen show or the pen show in May and possibly a pen show in Tokyo. So if you are expecting or if you want to go to the Chicago Pen Show, I will see you there. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I appreciate you all so much. Those of you that always watch, comment, and like my videos, it means so much to me um, that, you know, the work I put in to make videos and edit them and you know, all that jazz uh, is definitely worth it to share with you guys my community in the pen world. So, a front to pen world. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much. Um, leave a like, comment, um, and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, so today is Sunday at the pen show, and this is the San Francisco Pen Show game card, kind of. I have to get stamps from seven out of ten of these vendors. <laughs> so let's go check some out and uh, see, kind of chat with them and get a stamp. Yay, we got it. <laughs> Happy birthday, Alan. <laughs> Let's do some beasts. <laughs> Are you 20? Are you 30? Are you 40? Are you 50? 50? 6? <laughs> Plus 22. Plus 20. Oh. Plus 22. <laughs>